Welcome to the Passive Mobile Home Park Investing Podcast with your host, Andrew Keel. This is the podcast where you can get the education you need to invest 100% passively in the highly profitable niche of mobile home parks. Welcome to the Passive Mobile Home Park Investing Podcast. This is your host, Andrew Keel. And today we have an amazing guest in Mr. Jeff Cook. Before we dive in, I wanted to ask you a quick favor. Would you mind taking an extra 30 seconds and heading over to iTunes to rate this podcast with five stars? This helps us get more listeners, and it also encourages me to know that people are tuning in. Thanks for taking the time to do that. All right, let's dive in. Jeff Cook is the CEO and CFO of Cook Properties NY, a top 50 owner of mobile home parks in the U.S., Cook Properties recently launched a $20 million mobile home park and self-storage fund. The fund is a private equity fund focused on acquiring mobile home communities and self-storage facilities in Massachusetts, New York, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Cook Properties was formed in 1997, and they currently own and operate 26 mobile home communities with over 2,000 lots primarily across the state of New York. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thanks, Andrew. It's great to be here. Appreciate it. Awesome. Uh, Would you mind starting us off and telling us about your story and how you got into manufactured housing? Sure. Uh, So I started off with apartments in the city of Rochester. um, About my, I bought my first house in the late 90s, 97. I um, ended up getting up to about 100 units in the city. Um, I was doing doing pretty much everything myself, um, the maintenance, the management, all the bookkeeping. Um, my our father, I mean my Brian's father, um, he was also very helpful with uh, maintenance. He was a retired engineer from Kodak, uh, so he taught me a lot on the maintenance uh, front of uh, the apartments. Um, I sold some of them and then ended up selling the rest of them in uh, about 2007, 2008. Uh, we ended up selling about 65 units um, to cl- close out the apartments. And then after that, I uh, started buying more commercial and mobile home parks. I bought my uh, first mobile home park in, I think, right around 2008. Um, it was a very nice park. I still own it. It's up in uh, Sandy Creek, New York, uh, just west of the Tug Hill Plateau. Uh, great park, primarily seniors, mostly uh, double wides and, and uh, newer single wides. And uh, from there, we just we, I fell in love with the business model and just continued to you know aggressively buy uh, buy mobile home parks over the past uh, 10, 12 years. Man, that's fantastic. That's an amazing story. So I noticed that you said you sold your apartments uh, like 2007, 2008. Would you Correct. mind you know maybe sharing a little bit about 2008 and kind of the recessionary environment and, and how that was? So, yeah, so we actually sold them right before the bubble um, popped. Um, so that was a, you know, wow. fortunate. Yeah, it was, a, it was a good good time to sell. Um, and then going in, so we actually, uh, so before I bought my first mobile home park, uh, I bought an office building. And again, right before the uh, everything crashed. Uh, so it was, it was an office building that needed a lot of work and it had a lot of vacancy. Um, so I did all the work. I think I put about, about 200 grand into the property and no one was showing up to, to rent the spaces. Mm. Um, so it was certainly some, I learned some lessons. Um, I ended up filling the building, but just not at the rents that we were hoping, hoping to. Um, so that kind of soured me a little bit on the, on the office commercial, uh, commercial properties. Um, but at the same time we bought the mobile home park which had no, had no problems and really was unaffected by the, by the recession. Um, so that kind of led me to buy more, more mobile home parks. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, what are the most important things that passive investors, you know, LPs need to look out for when investing into mobile home parks? Um, I think that probably, I think the operator is the best, is the most uh, indicative uh, uh, indication for success um, for for a mobile home park investment. Um, I I think you need, you need a good operator to, to, you know, have a good, good investment. Um, Yeah, definitely. Good operator. Totally, totally. Um, 
you know, maybe you could elaborate a little bit on the type of mobile home parks you, you guys, you know, uh, pursue and acquire. I know that the state of New York uh, has some interesting landlord tenant laws and some operators won't even touch the state, you know, that they're sure. in California, they stay far away from. So maybe you sure. can discuss, you know, that along with the rent control laws and, and how you guys deal with those. Sure. Yeah. So they passed rent control back in uh, the summer of 2019. So we're almost, almost two years in. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to say it's, it hasn't been overly difficult. Um, fortunately, before rent control went into effect, um, pretty much all of our parks were close to uh, market rent or at market rent. So with rent control right now, we can only, we can only raise the rent 3%. Um, so if you're, you know, if you're significantly under market for your lot rent, um, that's a, that could cause a, a big problem for you. Um, but beyond, beyond the rent control uh, issue, there's been some other stuff that they have, they've also passed. Um, one of the things that we can't do anymore is uh, your traditional rent to own or lease option for the mobile homes. Mm. Um, so we, so to get around that, we're actually mostly doing for for the new homes that we bring in. We're mostly just doing rentals. Um, it's not our preferred our preferred avenue of uh, to fill lots, um, but again, you know, we we don't mind doing it. Um, you know, we do we do get the lot rent uh, on top of the on top of the home rent. Um, last year we ordered fifty homes, and this year we have one hundred and ten on order for, for our parks. Wow. Um, yeah. That's interesting. So when you look at purchasing properties, you know, do you, do park owned homes scare you? Do, do you stay away from those that have park owned homes? Uh, maybe you can elaborate on, on that at all. Yeah. Um, we don't mind park owned homes. We still like to stay under, you know, 20, 25% um, of the, of the total number of lots. Uh, age of the homes is like also a very big factor um, in our decision to, to buy a park. Uh, we certainly prefer not to have, you know, a, a large amount of park, park owned homes that are, you know, uh, really aged. Uh, we just bought a big portfolio here in the Rochester area. It was a uh, 400, just under 500 pads. And, and there's about 125 park owned homes, but a hundred of them were five years old or less. Uh, oh, wow. So that's, that lines up with our model of bringing in new, you know, brand new homes and, and renting them. Um, so it's, it's not something that we're, that we're scared, that we're scared of. Um, you know, on the same line, the same along the same lines with the rent control. You know, me and Brian, we've been doing real estate here in, in New York State, you know, for over twenty years, and we're we're uh, we're familiar and used to the uh, unfriendly business environment that that comes with being in New York State and the and the laws and and just how to deal with the the processes that that occur throughout the state. Um, so again, it's something that we're you know we're familiar with, and we've we've been able to be successful uh, despite it. So. Yeah, that, that's really fantastic because, you know, as I, as I talk to a lot of community owners, you know, like I said, they're staying away from the state of New York, which is, it, it kind of makes investing in New York kind of a, a moded investment because now you kind of have a, you have less competition, right? And it's kind of it, like, I, I heard recently that there's a fund that's, that's starting up to buy mobile home parks only with private utilities, right? Because a lot of people don't want parks that have wastewater treatment plants, lagoons, well water, uh, which is which is an interesting you know interesting way of of doing business. So, have you guys noticed uh, an increase in in competition, or has it remained steady over the last few years? Um, and I think it's actually declined a little bit. The uh, wow, the large portfolio I just mentioned that we um, purchased it was from a, a larger operator that didn't want to scale in New York State anymore, so they wanted to they wanted to get out. Um, yeah, like you said, I just don't, a lot of people do not want to come to New York or, or they want to get out of New York. Um, you know, we're, we're comfortable here. We're, you know, we've been successful here. Um, we're going to continue to do business here. Uh, you know, with, with me and Brian, uh, growing up here in New York state, uh, I mean, they've been saying that New York state's fallen off the edge of the cliff here for ever since I can remember. Um, I'm, I'm almost 50. So for the past 40 years, it seems like, you know, New York state was doomed and doomed to, uh, to failure and bankruptcy. And I mean, we, we haven't gotten there yet. I don't think we're going to get there. Um, you know, there's, there's still a lot, a lot of good things happening in New York. Um, you know, one of the things that we, that we like about New York state is 
you know, we don't have the explosive ups and downs that a lot of other parts of the country do. Um, it's extremely, extremely steady and stable. Um, when we when we look at our properties, we are looking uh, primarily at cash flow, um, not so much at uh, appreciation on the on the asset that we're buying. Um, now, given that there may not be strict appreciation on the asset, but we're going to certainly drive NOI to increase the value of the property, um, and we do that by by filling the pads, filling vacant pads. That's great. That's great. Um, what has been the toughest hurdle for you in the mobile home park business to date? Toughest hurdle. Um, we certainly didn't like didn't like going from not being able to do rent to owns to just rentals. Um, unfortunately, that was something that uh, the New York State Legislature put into effect that they thought would would help help the residents. Um, but I really think it, it really harms them because there's no option for for a lower income uh, resident who has you know marginal or, or poor credit to to buy a home. Um, so that's certainly been a challenge. Uh, we're still trying to to figure it out because we look we would like to offer that some type of uh, a program like that you know for the residents that want it. Um, so just doing strictly rentals has um, hasn't been a challenge. It's just an, an opportunity that we're making uh, that at some point here we want to we want to figure out. Uh, we're working on it. I've been looking into possibly becoming an MLO, uh, mortgage loan originator, and doing our own our own mortgage, uh, you know, mortgage originations. But again, that's a whole a whole process and a, a large yeah. step and costly too. Definitely. Uh, what can you tell us about the current state of the manufactured housing industry, and where do you see it going into the foreseeable future? Uh, we love manufactured housing. I think it's going to continue to, the demand is going to continue to increase, um, not just, you know, on our side, as far as purchasers, but the, um, the, the resource of affordable housing, uh, is going to, the demand is going to continue to increase. Um, we're actually looking into, uh, starting another fund that would, uh, would only invest in new and new mobile home park development. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's great. There's uh it's a, it's a, where else can you go? I mean, you can't, there's nowhere else that you can go and buy a, you know, a brand new home, three bedroom, two bath, you know, set up, ready to go turnkey for, you know, $50,000. Um, so we really see it as an attractive product for, for a lot, a lot of people out there. Do you guys retail any of your homes, the new homes that you guys bring in and, you know, how has your experience been with, with selling homes? You know, what, what's the retention rate? So we, we're retailers in our own communities. Um, we do try to sell homes, uh, but again, with, uh, with not being able to offer the rent to own, the, the uptake, uptake is not too well, not too good. Um, generally, we're renting somewhere between eight and nine homes out of 10. You're renting eight or nine out of 10? Okay. Yep, yep. And so the, the other one we're selling. The other one you're selling. Gotcha. Yep, yep. Okay. And do you find that the people that are buying those homes, are they getting financing or are they cash buyers? Uh, mostly, uh, mostly cash. Yep. Cash. Older, older seniors that may have, you know, that are selling their, their uh, stick built home and looking to downsize into something new. Gotcha. Okay. Smaller and newer. Yeah. Very interesting. Uh, this is a question I ask all the operators. Uh, what does the perfect mobile home park look like in your eyes? Uh, at least a hundred pads, uh, public utilities, public water, public sewer, uh, paved roads, no delinquency, no park owned homes. Um, all double wides. <laughs> it sounds like Uto I guess utopia from an investment standpoint. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait. And then the one more thing I'd add to Andrew would be, uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, 20, 30 vacant pads. Yeah, there you go. A little bit of but, value but, add, right? Right. But with the utilities and the pads all done. <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> now we're talking. Um, how has your communities fared with COVID? And, and what, what did you guys do during that time period to be proactive? And maybe you can share some, some insights on collections and, and kind of occupancy, things like that. Yeah. Um, it hasn't been, it hasn't been too bad. Uh, we, uh, 
our occupancy or um, our occupancy has been fine. Our collections um, have have t- uh, come down a little bit, about two about two or three points from from March until now. Um, so the collections haven't been haven't been bad. Um, we've been we've been happy with them. Uh, when when COVID first started, when it uh, late March and just I mean you know everything kind of hit the fan and it was uh, it was kind of a scary time because we really didn't know what was going to happen. Um, we, we were able to work with the banks on for all of our properties, not just the mobile home parks, but for our commercial properties uh, to defer some some mortgage payments. Um, so that helped us to give us a little cushion and uh, put a little bit of money in the savings because again we you know we like everyone else didn't really know what was going to happen. Um, we're, as far as our residents, I mean, we're trying to work with them as, as best we can. Um, we're encouraging them to make, you know, make the, as many, as many and as much payments as they can. Um, and just kind of continue to remind them that, you know, eventually, as you know, right now we can't evict, um, you know, there will come a time when, when evictions, uh, can't occur again, you know, you know, probably sometime this summer, uh, if not sooner. Um, and also trying to point them in directions where they can get some help from some of the some of the social social service agencies. Um, yeah, that's that last thing. Last thing we want is the, you know delinquencies. So definitely, yeah, that was one of the things we did uh, was was point them in the direction of the rental assistance programs, and that has just been huge for us. I mean, yep. uh, even to to date, you know, uh, we were able to get you know several months of rent even in advance to pay for for. Uh, some of our tenants that have been furloughed and things like that. So uh, yep, lots yep. of assistance out there right now, which is. There which is, is, yep. Yeah, there's really no, uh, there's no reason for, for any significant delinquencies. Definitely. Uh, tell us about the financing that you're able to secure on the, the communities you're purchasing and, you know, a little bit about what that looks like. Sure. Uh, so most of the financing we're doing these days is through, uh, is agency debt through Fannie and Freddie. Uh, you know, we're generally generally getting uh, 30 year amortizations, uh, 10 year terms, uh, somewhere you know 70 to 70 to 75 percent um, LTV. Um, the rates have ticked up a little bit in the past three months. Uh, we just closed on a couple of properties where we were in, we were in application stage back in you know uh, October, and we were in the low threes, and and uh, the T the Treasuries ticked up a little bit. And now we're you know three four three four three five uh on some of our deals um still i mean historically still really you know really really great interest rates um but obviously you know three one three two sounds better than three four or three five um we we have we've enjoyed working with fanny and freddie um we really have um uh, for some deals that we aren't that aren't ready for fanny or freddie um for we have one deal right now that we're working on that's uh, about 10 minutes from our office and uh it has actually has, we we're just talking about it, delinquency. It has a significant uh, delinquency rate. Not, not because I don't think, not because they can't pay, but because of um, just poor management. Um, so that one's not ready for Fannie or Freddie. Uh, so we're going to do just an interest only loan with a, a local bank for a couple of years, uh, get that delinquency taken care of, and then, and then go to Fannie. Uh, so hopefully the rates will still be, you know, low, lower. Um, yeah, so with the rates being so low, it makes it makes a lot of things uh, very very attractive. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, three four, you know, three five. That's still still it's really still great good. rate. Yeah, <laughs> we we really had is. a lot of debt that we had that we had taken on even just two years ago where we were in the in the low fives. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Crazy. And even that wasn't a bit really a bad rate. Oh, totally. Yeah. Um, Maybe you can tell us a little bit about Cook Properties, uh, you know, what the value proposition is and what makes your operation and funds different. Sure. So, uh, well, for, I guess for one, we're, you know, with us being here in New York, you know, we're, tr- we're trying and, and we're proving ourselves to, I guess, to be the New York guys. If, if people want to sell their parks in New York State, um, you know, they, they, uh, we're one of the people that they're going to come to. Um, so we're getting, we're certainly getting first look, um, at, at broker prop, you know, broker, uh, brokered properties. Um, you know, in addition, we also do our own, our own cold calling and, and, uh, sourcing of, of deals. Um, Cook Properties Fund, it's, uh, you know, as me and Brian started, you know, started, uh, the, the fund, um, we've both been in real estate. I've been in real estate for about 20 years and Brian's been in it for 10 years. Um, we're both, uh, very, you know, very involved in, in all the processes that, happen here at the office. 
um, you know, I, I feel like, you know, we have proven in the past and, and, I, you know, we'll continue to be good stewards of, uh, of our investors, uh, money. Um, I almost feel like I'm more careful and more prudent with, uh, with investor money than I am with, than I am with my own, um, just because I feel that, you know, significant responsibility, um, to, to safeguard their money. Definitely. Um, wow. Yeah, that was, uh, a lot of, uh, golden nuggets that, uh, that you brought there. I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, if our, if our listeners would like to get a hold of you, uh, what would be the best way for them to do so? Yeah, they can reach me at my, uh, my cell number is, uh, 585-233-4699. And also my email is jcookproperties at gmail.com. And that's uh, J C O O K properties at gmail.com. Awesome. And what is your website, Jeff? It's uh, cookpropertiesny.com. Awesome. Awesome. We'll put all that in the show notes. Oh, cool. Uh, that's it for today, folks. I really appreciate you all tuning in. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Andrew. Have a good day. Thanks for coming on. Bye bye. Hey, are you getting value out of this show? If so, would you mind please going over to iTunes and leaving the show a quick five-star review? I have a goal of hitting over 100 five-star reviews by the end of 2021, and it would mean the absolute world to me if you could help contribute to that. Thanks ahead of time for making my day with your five-star review of the show.